My name is Jerry Castagni, founder and owner of 3D Heights, Uptown 3D Printing Store located in Washington Heights. There's been a strong boom in 3D printing in the last couple of years. Uh, it's been around for over 30 years. Uh, 3D printing has been very expensive, but recently patents have expired uh, that allow the creation of desktop 3D printers for the regular consumer. So we're seeing 3D printers being used for entrepreneurial uh, projects uh, in middle schools, high schools, and medical applications to do prosthetic devices. It's really finding a lot of avenues in different applications. Uh, 3D printing as a whole is going to take away or add on to existing industries and markets. For example, uh, you're going to have a lot more opportunity in fashion design with customized 3D printed footwear, insoles, bracelets, jewelry, a lot of room for growth in 3D printed medical devices, cell phone cases, toys, accessories, uh, even 3D printed uh, parts for vehicles. So the benefit of 3D printing compared to mass manufacturing is the customization, personalization of the technology. You could make something very specific for an individual rather than taking something off the shelf that's mass manufactured. It really doesn't have the same value added as if something was created specifically for you and for your want and need. There's some negative condensation with 3D printing. I don't believe it's necessarily warranted. Uh, with any new technology, there's always gonna be people that use it for negative use. Uh, there's a lot of uh, information on the media in the media regarding 3D printed weapons. Well, with the consumer 3D printers out in the market, you won't be able to print out a functional weapon and the plastic won't be strong enough. The weapons that were created in the, that the media is kind of following, those were uh, industrial 3D printers that were $80,000 or more. Um, the, and there was a lot of engineering that went into place. There's tons of advancements in the medical field utilizing 3D printers, uh, from creating 3D printed cast, uh, lighter weight, you know, focused on healing specific areas of the bone faster, to making 3D printed prosthetics in locations such as Africa, or locations in a local disaster relief program where you know people lose uh, limbs or for veterans coming back. There's also bio 3D printing, uh, creating livers, kidneys, hearts, where uh, you know scientists are working on making functional 3D printed kidneys where people won't longer need donated kidneys or donated body parts. So at the moment, there's several different types of 3D printing technology. The most common is known as FDM, uh, fused deposition modeling where a uh, roll of plastic string is melted layer by layer to create the, the, the product desired. Then there's another process which uses light to cure uh, resin. And as that light hits the liquid resin, uh, that liquid hardens layer by layer. And then when you're finished, you just pull that item out of the liquid and that becomes uh, the 3D finished product. Uh, there's also processes that use paper, office paper to create 3D models by compressing it and cutting it together and also uses uh, also another process that uses powder. So there's several middle schools and high schools not only in the U.S. and in our local community but around the world that are implementing 3D printing to their curriculum. Uh, so they're taking it to show you know different types of mathematical equations, uh, they're doing historical pieces or geographical landmarks and to give kids a better understanding of what's out there. They're also using 3D printers to you know, fuel that STEM initiative and you know, create robotics housing or small microcomputers in the classroom. So 3D printing does have a strong place, um, not only in middle school, high schools, but you know, everything, everywhere throughout our educational process. So the time a 3D printed item takes to make depends really on what that project is, how large it is, uh, what's gonna be the functionality of it. So for example, when creating a medical device like this hemostat, used for surgery to clamp down on certain items, uh, like stitches. Uh, this took about two hours to create, to 3D print, using a plastic 3D printer. Young people, teenagers, they could easily access 3D printers either through um, schools if they have it available, uh, libraries are starting to use it, uh, retail stores such as myself are opening up. Again, there's low cost 3D printers. Uh, so once you have a 3D printer, the question is for the youth, what am I gonna do with it? Uh, a lot of people, especially the youth, they are becoming very entrepreneurial. So they're creating items to sell online, you know, generating a source of revenue and income for themselves, and also experimenting with new technology. And that's how they're growing the segment and growing the technology um, with their interest.